Have you got a problem with your 3D printer that you just don't know how to fix? Today, I'm gonna to help you help yourself with my step-by-step -step troubleshooting website. In terms of teaching tech, my proudest achievement of 2020 was not in fact a video, but rather a website. My calibration website aimed to revolutionize dialing in your 3D printer with a range of interactive pages that generated G-code to suit your particular machine. Since launch, I've had a lot of positive feedback and I'm really grateful that it's been so well received. Today, I'm expanding the site, but rather than adding more calibration that'll come at a later date, I'm moving sideways to expand into troubleshooting. Yes, there's other pages too, like information about my sponsors and my review policy, but in this video, which I'm gonna try and keep brief, we're gonna concentrate on just the troubleshooting side. We're gonna start with general principles. And the first one is to understand your machine before you start modification. A lot of people will buy a new 3D printer and have three or four things lined up they wanna change straight away. Now, if they're beginner to 3D printing, that can be a trap because they don't really understand their machine and there's a fair chance something's gonna go wrong. Also, if you have your first 3D printer and you immediately upgrade to something like auto bed leveling, you're robbed of learning the skill of being able to do it manually. The aim of this video in this website is to be methodical, and that means changing only one thing at a time. Let's say we've got a hot end jam, and instead of trying one thing at a time to fix it, we try a bunch. Now, if the problem goes away, we don't actually know which one was responsible and whether the things that we changed when we didn't need to will come back to haunt us later on. What we're aiming to adopt is the methodology of a scientific test, where we have one variable, we eliminate it, and then we move on to the next thing, and we systematically work out what the problem is, and then fix it. The next part of the tab relates to if you're still stuck, and you're seeking help in some sort of community group. There's some tips there that should be obvious, like using the search feature, being appreciative, and using free web services to supply as much information to the people trying to help you as possible. Before we start troubleshooting, it's important to have the right tools. And I have done a video on useful 3D tools in the past, but in this video, we're concentrating on just the essentials. And that comes down to two items you need to pay money for, and everything else is free. Firstly, we have a set of digital calipers. They're handy in a multitude of ways. And secondly, and probably more importantly for this video, we have a multimeter, which is used to measure various electrical aspects of your 3D printer. The other vital tool that you'll need is a piece of software to connect to your printer via terminal or sometimes called console. If you're using Octoprint, you've already achieved this with the terminal tab, but if you're not, the free software Pronterface is what I'll be using in this video because it's available for Mac, Windows, as well as Linux. At the bottom of this tab, there's some links to some other things you should really be aware of. For instance, the G-code reference for all the most popular firmwares, in this video, we are concentrating on Marlin because it's the most popular firmware and the documentation for that is very thorough with examples and everything explained. I really would recommend having this documentation bookmarked on your browser. One other thing worth exploring is the documentation of the product that you're fitting to your 3D printer. Companies like Big Tree Tech do a pretty good job of putting a lot of documentation online so you can find wiring diagrams, schematics and manuals to suit whatever object that you're fitting. Other times the documentation might be on the product page or a website, like it is with the Ant Labs BL Touch. So we're ready to start troubleshooting, but how do we know if it's an actual problem with the printer, or maybe the printer just needs a bit of maintenance? Embedded on the frame check tab, we have my 3D printer essential maintenance video, as well as a link through to the frame check tab on the calibration website, which gives you a handy list to go over and check your printer. It can be easy to go down the rabbit hole thinking your printer has some sort of mystery problem when all it is is perhaps loose belts. And that's the type of thing we're trying to eliminate at this early stage. When it comes to troubleshooting 3D printers, knowledge is power. And the way we're gonna get the most knowledge is by connecting via terminal. This means we take our computer or perhaps Octoprint, we plug in a USB cable between the two and we connect and talk directly to the firmware. On the connecting via terminal tab, we've got a step-by-step -step on what should be a pretty straightforward procedure. And down the bottom of the tab, it's got tips on what to send via terminal to know that your printer is working. Let's say you've just done a firmware update, but you're not sure if it's actually worked. By sending M115, it'll tell you when the firmware was compiled as well as its capabilities. 
Let's move on. And the next tab we have is regarding the first layer, which I still think causes 90% of problems for new users to 3D printing. Countless times I've seen a post in a community group saying that the person has leveled the bed over and over, but the first layer just won't stick. This illustrates the importance of providing images or video when you post in this way, because quite often when that then comes out, you can see that the first layer is far too far from the bed and the filament is just not adhering. I've made a whole video on this topic before, and that's embedded on this tab, as well as links to the G-code generator to test your first layer, and some images to show what too far, just right, and too close looks like when your first layer is going down. At the bottom of the tab, we have some other suggestions to try if all of these things aren't working, and it's worth working through the list one by one. You'd be surprised just how much difference it can make if you have an open window with cool air coming in and ruining your print. Next up, we have another really common problem, and that is filament jamming somewhere in the system. We know that in a working 3D printer, the heater block gets the filament molten and the extruder drive gear pushes it through and out the nozzle to be deposited as part of the 3D model. On this tab, we have a list of things to work through if your hot end is jamming. Let's cover some of the common ones in this video. The first one is setting the correct temperature for your particular filament and most filament manufacturers will specify a range that you should be aiming for. If your printer is working below this, the filament won't melt properly and won't flow, and eventually you'll probably have a jam. Another one that catches people out is having the nozzle too close to the bed when printing their first layer. If you think about a nozzle with plastic coming out underneath, you will need to actually have clearance for that plastic to exit properly. So if we're too close to the bed, it blocks it off, the filament backs up and jams the system. If you can hear your extruder stepper motor clicking as the first layer goes down, but not really at any other time, there's a good chance you need to adjust your Z offset to get your first layer just a little bit further away. The next problem is also common, but particularly to Creality printers that use a PTFE lined hot end rather than an all metal hot end. It's imperative that that PTFE tube pushes hard against the back of the nozzle. And if there is a little gap created, perhaps from the fitting coming loose, the filament is free to ooze out sideways and clog the system. Luke Hatfield has already made a great fix on Thingiverse for this that modifies the hot end to eliminate the problem. And Chep has also made a great video explaining how this works. So I've embedded that on the page. There's some other things to check lower down the page that are less common, but no matter what is causing the jams in your hot end, after the jam happens, there's a good chance the hob gear on your extruder will grind into the filament and then fill up with filament dust. It's important after we clear the jam to get a spare toothbrush, not your actual toothbrush, and clean out the teeth to give the printer the best chance of printing normally. Next up, we're looking at what happens if you've changed the main board or perhaps just the stepper motor drivers and your stepper motors are now traveling backwards. Firstly, you should establish this is in fact true by using the manual LCD controls to jog the printer's axes. As the tab says, this can be confusing depending on the layout of your 3D printer. So a good tip that I have is to put some masking tape in the corners and label them min and max. So when you move the bed, you're sure it's moving in the right direction. If you have established that some axes need to be reversed, we have two options. In Marlin firmware, in configuration.h, we go to the section that starts with invert underscore x, and we can toggle between true or false as necessary, and that will reverse the stepper direction. But let's say we don't have access to the firmware source. We can actually reverse the plug as it plugs into the main board. But a lot of the time the connectors are designed so this isn't very easy. So rather than cut them with a knife and mangle them permanently, what I would recommend doing is lifting up the base connector off the main board, reversing it around and then gently pushing it back down. You'll then find your connector can go in on reverse and you haven't damaged or changed anything permanently. The next tab deals with a problem that I hear about a lot and that's that the triggering of either an end stop, an ABL probe or a filament runout sensor isn't working or is working in reverse. And we're gonna use one very powerful tool to diagnose and fix this, and that's M119 over terminal. When we send M119, the firmware will report back to the terminal whether these inputs are open or triggered. Here's how it works. We should move our 3D printer so that none of the end stops are being touched send an M119 and we would hope that it would say everything is open. If we then manually move the printer to depress one of the end stops and send M119 again, if everything is working well, that access will now say triggered. 
If the system is working properly, we can work our way through each one and it will change from open to triggered as we press the switch. But let's say something has gone wrong. Let's say that when we press the X switch, it actually says that Y is triggered. Well, in this case, M119 has told us that we have the two in reverse and we simply need to unplug the two switches and reverse them into the main board. So what about if they're triggering in reverse? They say triggered when they're not pressed and that reverses to open when we actually home the machine. If your printer has this problem, you'll probably notice that when you home, it pretty much stops instantly and homing won't make it head towards the end stops. To fix this in the firmware, if we know the correct section, it's simply a matter of toggling from true to false or vice versa to fix this problem. But what about if pressing the switches has no effect? They either always report open or always report triggered. Well, the first thing you should check is that your end stops are actually plugged in and to the correct port. A lot of main boards have both min and max inputs for end stops, so make sure you've got them plugged into the right one. If that still doesn't work, in the firmware, we have a section where we can toggle between end stop pull-ups, pull-downs, or turning both off. And generally changing between these will alleviate the problem. By now, this has hopefully allowed you to fix all of your end stops, but sometimes one of them still remains a pain. And that means there's probably something wrong with the actual wiring or end stop switch. So what we're gonna use is our multimeter to diagnose which of those is the problem. If we set the multimeter to continuity, what we can do is measure when the probes are touching and a circuit is completed. And that works if there's a piece of wire or any other electrical component in between. When your multimeter can find continuity, its display will change and some multimeters even have a buzzer. It doesn't actually matter what the screen says as long as it's changing from one state to another. The first thing you can do is test the actual end stop switch by connecting the probes to the terminals that are wired up to the main board. Again, we don't care which way the logic works, as long as there's a change on the multimeter when we either press or open the end stop switch. Assuming the switch is okay, we can now probe for continuity on the actual wires going from the switch back to the main board. And to do that, we simply touch a probe on either end of the wire. And if the wire is intact, the multimeter should tell us. This red wire is fine, but the black wire doesn't show continuity, which means there's a break somewhere inside it. And there's been many times where this has saved me, where I thought my wiring was fine, but when I actually tested it, I had one broken wire in a loom. Most commonly this happened when I was crimping my own connectors. M119 is incredibly powerful because it doesn't only work for end stops. If we have filament run out connected, it also reports for that. And if we're using some sort of probe for ABL, we can report on the triggering for that too. Again, this tab tells you where to go in the firmware if you need to invert the logic or change whether you're using pull up or pull down resistors. Next up is super common and it's the BL touch or other auto bed leveling probes. I've always had success with these, but sometimes people ask for help and they just can't get it to work. So this tab aims to go through everything to do with the BL Touch and add some tips that apply to the BL Touch as well as other ABL probes. The first thing to understand about a BL Touch is that it's controlled by the printer rather than just reporting back like an end stop or other type of probe would. This means it has more wires than other probes and I guess that means potential for more things to go wrong. When you're wiring up your BL Touch, please actually pay attention to the wiring diagram. Check and double check the wiring diagram to avoid disaster. When you turn on a 3D printer with the BL Touch, it should click in and out a couple of times. But all this tells us is that the red and brown wires are connected correctly and there's no guarantee anything else will work. So now we're gonna connect via terminal and test the functions one by one. If in the terminal we send M280P0S120, the BL Touch will go into an extended self test, and we can reset the BL Touch by sending M280P0S160. If these commands are working, it means you've wired up your yellow communication wire successfully, and the firmware is able to send commands to the BL Touch. So now we'll turn our attention to making sure the black and white trigger wires are reporting from the BL Touch back to the firmware. With the probe sitting idle and retracted, sending M119 should tell us that it's triggered. If we manually deploy it with M280P0S10, M119 will now tell us that the probe status is open. If we retract it manually with M280P0S160, it should now say that it's triggered again. Even if this is working, the first time that you use the 3D printer and the probe, put your hand underneath it so if it doesn't trigger in real life, you can cut the power and avoid a collision. Whatever type of probe that you're using, it's very important to get the mounting right. 
It should be rigidly fixed and it shouldn't be able to move or vibrate free over time. The tip of the probe and the tip of the nozzle generally have a specified distance that you should be aiming for too, to ensure the most accuracy. If your probe's not accurate, there's a list of items on the tab and it also shows you how to probe over the terminal to see your results specifically as well as graphically using Octoprint. And if you're still having issues, we have another option for more detailed testing. And that is going into Marlin, enabling M48 probe repeatability test. And after we issue this command, we'll see the probe go up and down on the same spot repeatedly before outputting the results to terminal. Since the probe is going in the same spot, you would expect the triggering point to be more or less the same. So what we're looking for here is a very small difference between the min and max and a very small standard deviation. M48 is a great test to work out exactly how accurate your probe is. We've got one more option for debugging the pins of our main board, and most people won't need this, but for others, it might be exactly what they're after. In Marlin firmware, we can uncomment pins debugging as well as direct pin control, and that will allow us to use the M43 G code command. Putting it in by itself will list all of the pins and their functions in the firmware. There's a lot of information and I found mine was a little bit garbled and certain pins were left out. Fortunately, we can send M43P followed by the pin number to find out exactly what the firmware is doing with that particular pin. This is already handy, but M43 has some other specific uses. If we send M43S, it'll activate a special BL touch test mode. The pin will move in and out several times and then we'll be prompted to touch the pin with our hand to manually trigger it before receiving confirmation via terminal. Sending M43E1 will put the end stops into watching mode. And at this point, I expected I'd be able to press them and have something come out on the terminal, but it didn't seem to work like that. So if you can explain what I'm doing wrong, please leave a comment below. We can also expand M43 with the W argument, which will watch a specific pin and monitor it for activity. That's gonna wrap this one up and you can bet in time, I'm gonna expand both this troubleshooting as well as the original calibration pages. If you've got a problem that you think that I've missed, please leave it down below in the comments section. I get so many comments on the channel and there's only so many people that I can reply to directly. So I think my time is better spent creating resources like this that teach people how to help themselves. And after all, that's kind of the point of this whole channel. Thank you so much for watching and until next time, happy diagnosing and solving your 3D printer issues. G'day, it's Michael again. If you liked the video, then please click like. If you wanna see more content like this in future, click subscribe and make sure you click on the bell to receive every notification. If you really wanna support the channel and see exclusive content, become a patron. Visit my Patreon page. See you next time.